What's up, what's up, what's up, everybody? You are listening to the Data is My Science podcast, the show that makes data your passion. I'm your host, Dapper Data. Okay, today we're going to talk about data visualization, also known as data viz, uh, storytelling as well. We're going to talk about how do you tell that right story with your data, okay? And as you all know, I like to have a guest on here, and I have a special guest. I have a special guest, you know, Lee Feinberg. He, he is an amazing, amazing individual very very sharp and and we're going to talk a lot about how how data visualization is an important aspect in the whole data transformation process right and as you all know uh if you i've talked about data visualization probably one episode earlier on so definitely check that out but data visualization is probably one of the hottest topics right now when you think about business intelligence okay you got microsoft bi you have tableau um, and, and it helps you understand things, especially in the government community that I work on, uh, things like customer purchasing decisions, um, things like uh, uh, determining be, uh, behavioral patterns, you know, that suggest fraud or something like that. You know, and I have a quick story to tell. Uh, I, I actually have dealt with, with a, um, a government customer that told me at one point that he didn't care anything about what I did. He only cared about the visuals, right? He only cared about the data visualization aspect. And so it was pretty funny because I spent, oh man, probably six months to eight months just diving in. I had these spreadsheets, I had data from all these different sources and I'm doing all the nitty gritty stuff, right? You know, as I told you, uh, Lee, I, I like to do the uh, the merging, the munging, all that stuff of the data. That's the stuff I do, the cleaning up process, right? So we're ingesting the data from all these sources. And I just kept thinking, man, these C-level execs are going to care all about whether I'm doing Python and all these Excel spreadsheets that I'm bringing, all this database stuff that I'm bringing in. So I had all these, these uh, I had all of that on, um on on my actual uh presentation right and at the end of it they <laughs> you saw the eyes right they were just big and 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 they didn't know that they didn't know anything about what i was, was talking about right and they said hey look you know at the end of the conversation at the end of the presentation they told me these were ctos cios ceos all the c-level execs they said hey look you know we know that you're presenting something great to us but we don't understand what it is mm-hmm. And in order for you to um, get, in order for us to relay the message to the masses, we need it in a visualization format. So we need Tableau, we need Microsoft PI, you know, we need those type of things because it helps us relay that message to them. So data storytelling, Plastic. data viz is, is so important. And uh, I want to introduce you all to a special guest of mine, Lee Feinberg. I mean, this. This, this person right here is going to blow your mind. You know, he founded a company called Decision Viz in 2012 to help leaders use data to persuade decisions and drive action. Uh, he's developed a framework called Decision to Act. So we're going to talk, we're going to talk a little bit about that. And he has uh, his bachelor's and master's in electrical engineering, which I personally want to know how do you get from there to data viz. So we'll, <laughs> we may or may not get to that, you know. Um, but but, it's, but but to me, in my eyes, it all means that you know, definitely a smart individual. Um, he's led and founded um, the New Jersey and New York Tableau user groups. And uh, and and I want, without further ado, let me introduce everybody to Lee Feinberg. You know, Lee, tell them a little bit about yourself. Yeah, it's great to be here. Thanks. And, you know, I just want to point out that I tried I tried my best to look dapper today. You know, I have a uh, good, you know, you do look dapper. stylish shirt for you. So and, and your audience. Uh, yeah, it's I think you kind of kind of summed up the kind of where where I've been. And what's exciting to me is more about where I'm thinking, you know, how I'm trying to take all this into a new way of thinking and and get people to change just like your audience said to you, you came in with all of this, you know, kind of hardcore, look what I did. And Mm -hmm. they kind of said, we don't really care about how you got to this. What we care about is what does it all mean? Mm -hmm. And what can we do with it? Right? Not that it's not important, not that you have, you you have to do it the right way. You have to be really good at that. But that's not what they were there for. That's not what they were really interested in in the end. And so 
this idea of storytelling and data visualization to me boils down to communication. It's still just a communication issue that you have to solve for your audience. What what are they there for? And 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 you have to understand some of that beforehand too, right? What do they want to get out of it? What are they going to use it for? And that's the kind of that you mentioned design um, designed to act. This framework is really to help people change their perspective on how they approach the work. And, and hopefully we'll get to, to talk a little bit about that today because it's really mm -hmm. helping people change in a way that is, is really made a difference in, in how they go about this work. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. And, and you know, thank you for that. You know, thank you for that intro. Um, you know, Lee, you have, you have done uh, something I want to say is a unique aspect of things, right? You know, when you focus in on um, that one part, right, that, that a lot of people are not talking about as much, right? But they should be. They should be talking about it because at the end of the day, that visualization piece, that uh, that really helps the decision makers make the right decision, right? You know, of course, I guess it, it, you on the flip side, you need you need the right data to feed mm -hmm. into those pretty charts and graphs, right? That the sea level is X Absolutely. love to have, right? Uh, but 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 you're the end result, right? You're that that backbone that says, hey, look, this is how we are um, able to show the world. Because I, I'm assuming uh, you you and the, and the company and and other people who really focus in on that data visualization piece, you know, they understand that um, that that humans see visuals a lot easier than they see those those columns and rows right and those numbers and all that yeah kind of. absolutely do you, do you see that the you... yeah i have a i i i joke about that and it but it was a real world situation that mm -hmm. I, I used to live in at a company i used to, to work for and every friday we had a big uh, team meeting and there was a one of the executives would show a spreadsheet mm -hmm. and he would always say something like, hey, you can see this trend. Mm -hmm. And I thought, you know, for as good as I think I am with information, yeah. I was I couldn't see anything. The only right. reason they could see it is because they'd studied it, right? So mm -hmm. they knew what was in there. They weren't looking at it for the first time, but everybody else was. Right. And right. so when you translate all that information to something that's visual, you're giving the the audience the readers the ability to use what most of us have is a very natural ability to process images and to look at something and start to, to get meaning out of it right away and that's really yeah. the underpinnings of why visualization is so important and doing it well right it's not yeah. just it's not just making a chart it's understanding uh, what the chart is supposed to do it you know why it should exist, why it should be designed in a certain way, because you can take the same data and make many different types of charts from the same exact data. So there's all kinds of thinking that has to go into understanding the connection you're trying to make from your idea, which is kind of that storytelling point, right? What's the mm -hmm. idea behind this? What's the, the message you want to get across? And then using that to figure out the best way to show it. And I have this little catchphrase I use with people called intent before content. So I got to <laughs> figure out, you know, what is it? Yeah. What is the point that yeah. I'm trying to get across? I have to understand that before I can figure out how to show it the right way. Rather than right. just saying, I'm going to make a chart and then put a label on the chart, you know, make a title sales. Okay. But yeah. what is that? What is that really supposed to carry? And that seems to convey a lot. People seem to relate a lot to that idea to, to, to let it sink in about that that difference in approach. Yeah, yeah, like your why, right? Or or your meaning behind what you're doing, you know? And, and I started to learn all that and I didn't realize how impactful it was, like data visualization really was, right? And storytelling was until mm -hmm. I took a course. We talked about a course, I took a course probably about a month and a half ago and it really shed light on how impactful that part was. You really need a dedicated person or team to that aspect, right? I mean, I'm assuming every phase needs the same, but you know, at the end of the day, you think, oh man, you can, if you could do the data mining, you could probably do the data visualization. That's not the case, right? 
I mean, I'm going to be honest, uh, like Microsoft BI and Tableau, you know, I learned a little bit of, uh, about it throughout uh, my my doctoral degree, my PhD, but it's still hard as crap to me. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. For some reason, I'm so used to, right, the Python, the PyTorch, mm -hmm. all that stuff, like that bad lib and diving in when it comes down to like Python development or our programming, right? I'm, I'm diving into the weeds of things, doing the analytics piece, engineering, all that good stuff. But then when it comes down to the visualization piece, I want to know it's so bad, but it's something that uh, you realize that if you if you have a massive amounts of data, you probably need a, a dedicated person or team to that aspect that really knows that, right? Do you see that a lot? I think it can go, you know, a, a couple different ways. So mm -hmm. I I like to break it up in a slightly. I'll give you kind of some analogies to that. So one of the problems I see and and that, that I've experienced because I've been working in this kind of data and data visualization field for a long time. So I've seen it evolve from mm -hmm. just struggling with Excel and PowerPoint to mm -hmm. things that happened in between and then Tableau and, and, and things that are going on now. And the problem is, in my, in my opinion, with mm -hmm. even going back to those older applications, which are still around, but let's just go jump into something like a Power BI or a Tableau, which a, a company might just start to distribute to its employees. And here it is, you have access to it. Mm -hmm. Right now you can do data visualization. And the problem is I can actually, to some extent, I can teach you the, the technical aspects of using it. Right. Mm -hmm. I don't have to teach you everything, but I could get you jump started. Right. But when I don't teach you any of the foundations of thinking about it as a communications tool, or what I like to say is like kind of language of visualization, think of it yeah. this way. If I gave you Microsoft Word, and I taught you everything about Microsoft Word. You're an expert in Microsoft Word. Mm -hmm. I don't teach you almost anything about English. <laughs> right. <laughs> how useful is Microsoft Word to you? You said, how do you? What you? How useful will Microsoft Word be to you? Yeah, you're right. You don't teach me anything about English because you need to know English in order to, to be able to uh, do Microsoft Word, right? Right. You know? But that's or, what happens with these tools. They just throw them out there and say, okay, now you're an expert in data visualization and data storytelling because you have a tool. I'm like, no, it doesn't work that way. And that's why it's the com companies are not getting the kind of benefit that they want because people aren't really changing their approach. They're just taking the way they've always done the work with the other tools and just using it with a tool that lets them work differently. I used to tell the uh, founder of, of Tableau this, I, I had this very strong opinion about Tableau. As much as I, I, I love Tableau, but I have a mm -hmm. fear. I have a fear that what we're doing, you know, what the software does is enable people to make more bad visualizations faster. Mm -hmm. And that it's actually a... going to make, could make things worse. Mm -hmm than better. And I and I say that in an extreme, but there's some truth to it as well, because when you just set people loose and they're not really sure what they're doing, plus forget about the fact that they could do things and show information in a, the wrong way or a bad way, which could derail the whole point, right? Like you were saying in the beginning, people want to make decisions and take action from it. Uh, and if, if they're being given things that aren't helping them that way, then it's going to be a lot worse for the way the company operates. So right. I kind of think about these things in ex extremes just mm -hmm. to uh, push people's thinking about, about how to approach these problems because they are pretty, like you said, they're pretty significant things to get, to get right as much as you, you do your work to get the data right. Mm -hmm. So just tying it all back, my point to saying all that was, I think you can learn these aspects, but you have to learn them. Yeah. I think you can, I think people can learn them, but I don't think you get, you're, you're good at it just because you have the software and that's where you struggle, right? Is you had the software, be like, I'm really not sure what I'm doing with this. I can learn, I can watch some videos and I know where the button, you know, the operations are, but how do I make this thing really sing and, 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 and be effective? That's a great point. Um, and I'm probably one of those use cases, right? <laughs> because I'm, I was in school, right, during the time, and we took a data visualization course, right, throughout my doctoral degree. And I'm thinking, all right, you know, um, how 
how effective is this going to be? So they gave us all these tools, right, that we could choose from. So I did a research paper on all these different tools, you know, chartable, even tools that are like free, right? <laughs> free tools that are out there. And they give a free version of like Tableau and things like that. So mm -hmm. I downloaded all of them. I played around with them, did differentials and all that stuff. And, um, you know, I realized that you needed to really dive deeper into each one of them to be good. You know, I could do a research paper on it. And, 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 and even though I spoke to Tableau, right, I spoke to Tableau in a research paper, um, I realized that I could feed it. And this is something you just hit on. That's some, that's an amazing uh, topic that the audience really needs to hear is that you could clean all the data, right? You can give it everything you need up into the point where you have to do the visualization piece. And you could you could be so good. The data could be clean. The data could be right, right? There's no white spaces in it, all that good stuff. Um, and it's actually good data. Quality data is given to you. But if you don't understand the visualization piece enough, right, to, to, to project it to whoever you're trying to project it to, then you could essentially mess up everything that was done before. So that's the whole piece right there right. that, you know, it's not just that you're feeding it good quality data and voila, right? You know, the visualization is great. You can have bad visualization, right? That's what you're, that's what we're hitting on, right? You can actually have yeah. you can put together uh, a, a bad visualization for your audience, even though the data is correct, but you could do so many different things that are uh, uh, mistakes, if you will, you know, from a visualization standpoint. Right. Yeah, the other the the other side of that is that if the presentation of that information doesn't go well for whatever reason, mm -hmm. it actually can reflect poorly on the data. So if I show something to to whomever, let's say it's the you know the CEO, and they're looking at it and they're like, I don't understand this. They may not verbalize it, but they might also be thinking this data is not even right. Right. Or they might question the data just because it's not being shown in a way that makes sense or is understandable easily. And mm -hmm. so they really, these two sides have to work uh, very well together. And I think that's an area that uh, people are still not, in some ways it's going to, it could get worse because as the, as there becomes greater division in the work, meaning there's, if there's higher separation between, Hey, these people just work on the data and these people just work on the, the delivery of the information. And there has to be kind of an area in between where they're working more closely so that both sides understand better what's mm -hmm. going on uh, in, 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 to, in to make a final product. Cause that's how I look at, I actually, you mentioned, how did I get from electrical engineering to this? And it's actually, there is, there is actually a little path. And it became when I started electrical engineering and I did it for a few years, I said, I don't think I could do this for my whole life, mm -hmm. but I did like, uh, working with the product managers. And so I, I started spending more time in product management and marketing in my career. And when I got into this whole problem of data visualization and thinking about how to work with clients and reframing it, I saw it as a product. And I said, so we're not just making charts. We're not making a presentation. It's actually a product. And that final product has to achieve something just like if you went on Amazon and bought something, it's supposed to do it. So what if you went on Amazon and bought this data visualization thing? You know, what should it look like? What would you be, what would the product description be there? And I know that might sound strange, but mm -hmm. it's a way to think about how you go through the, all the different pieces of the work and get a very different result than just taking the software, taking the data, making charts and publishing it online and mm. saying, okay, I did my work and move on <laughs> to another project. So it's, it's kind of a unique position, mm. but, uh, but I like it. Yeah. I look at it as like an art, right? Yeah. You know, when I see visualization aspect, it's, it's so, it, it, it definitely reminds me of somebody that really enjoys art, right? Somebody that can, uh, a really good visualization, if you will, you know, because there's some out there that are definitely bad. I probably, I'm probably one of them who just produces <laughs> whatever, you know, but, but, um, but, but when I look at it and, and if somebody can explain it to me, right, it's so beautiful in a sense where you're looking, man, this, 
it actually makes sense, right? And sometimes if you don't have that eye, right, mm -hmm. for art, right, you wouldn't capture how beautiful it could be, if you will, you know? And so, yeah, you know, yeah. thanks, thanks again for definitely uh, uh, joining in. You know, I, 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 I want to really dive into the company that you have, right? You know, you've been doing this for years, uh, Decision Biz, okay? I got a chance to check it out a little bit. I checked the website out. Amazing, amazing company, right? You know, Appreciate that. And, and and you're doing some great things to make some impacts in the world. What what is data this decision is? Sorry, and 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 what are the impacts that you're making um, to the world? The whole world. Wow, that's a that's a big. <laughs> uh, <laughs> although I have been fortunate enough to 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 bring some of this to to different parts of the world, which is which is uh, which is good. The you know what. What I really focus on is not, you know, we've been talking about data visualization and storytelling, but it really goes back to this idea that I call creating an army of trustworthy decision makers. Mm -hmm. And what does that mean? It goes back to this point about the, the reason that we're doing all of this is to help drive decision making and taking action in a company. Mm -hmm. And everything works backwards from that. That's where we're trying to go. Uh, all the data that we're working with, it's there to help support achieving that. The data is not the thing in itself, right? The data visualizations are not the things in themselves. Mm -hmm. They're all there to support that end, that end result and help people do that. And so the challenge within that is helping people understand that because the way I'm sure you experience this, I know I've experienced this is you, you go to somebody and you're at the start of a project and they say, what do you want? Mm -hmm. What do you need? You get multiple answers. I don't know. Or, <laughs> you know, or they give you something basic where mm -hmm. they say, I need all the data. Right. Yeah. They, uh, and, and so what do we do? Well, the typical thing is we just respond to that. Mm -hmm. And we don't get into any kind of dialogue with people about what that really means, because there's this um, a kind of hierarchy. Maybe it's your executives and your well, I can't I can't question the exec my boss or my boss's boss mm -hmm. about that. I I should just do it. But you know what happens? You go mm -hmm. and do it. You show it to them, and they're like, "That's not what I wanted." Even uh, though you're yeah. like, "But that's what you asked me to do." Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what, maybe what they asked you to do, but that's not really what they needed or wanted. Mm -hmm. So there's this dynamic that goes yeah. on that gets very fresh. Everybody gets frustrated. Mm -hmm. So we've, the, I think the biggest impact that I start to make with people is helping them admit that that goes on, mm -hmm. right? See it and then start helping them and go through the, the change that they need to. So a lot of what I do is talk about cultural issues and how to overcome them in a company. So if if let's say you came to me and and went you went through that. You said, "Lee, I need to get I need to get the sales I need to see the sales for our products for last, you know, month or whatever." Mm -hmm. And I might say something, "Hey, you know, no, it's not a problem. Uh Bobby, I can get I can get that data. We have it. And I know I could put together some, you know, something that looks nice, but when I get that all to you, can you just before I start because mm -hmm. I really want to make sure that I can get you what you need before I just start running and, and doing the work. What is it that you're trying to understand? And what mm -hmm. is it that you, what is it that you're trying to look for that might actually make you think about uh, doing something and what might, and, and what would that look like? And people are like, I'm like, could you say that before you just go off? And they're like, yeah, I think I could. Mm -hmm. And then we make them do it in an environment, <laughs> in a safe environment and say, okay, do it. And we role play, literally make people role play. And then they oh, realize okay. it's not as easy to do it as they, in their head, they're like, oh, sure. And then right, even it's a friend of theirs on their team does it right. and they freeze up. Why? Because they haven't ever done that before. So we force them to learn and get comfortable with just that slight behavior change. Uh, yeah. But that starts to make this huge difference in how they communicate with people. And it ends up making their jobs a lot better because they, their work's easier, they learn more, they get better rapport with the executives. 
um, because they're delivering stuff and, and they're not, they're doing it faster because they're not reworking it also. So it's not, they're not, you know, frustrated by that whole, they don't know, they don't know what they're doing. You know, right. they always blame the other person. So are you, are you, are you, are you, um, actually educating a lot of the customers on you're not just educating them on data visualization right you're educating them on data in general right you know understanding the value of it just seems like understanding how they can make an impact understanding what they're doing wrong understanding if there is a problem getting them to really understand that there is a problem initially that they're having issues with you know yeah. Is that is that to sum it up? Is that what you're you're doing? It with is, it? yeah. Because there's lots of if you if you look at the the I would say materials that are available today. There's plenty of materials that you could go and Google and say data visualization best practices, and it wow. might say make a chart this way. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm now I technically may be better at making that particular type of chart. Maybe I learned some little nuances of well, something I did that could be better. It's not really the, it's not the thing that's going to make the dramatic improvement. So that's what I'm always trying to figure out is what is it, you know, those things are available. What is it that's really going to change something in a much larger way? And so I keep breaking these problems down. And that's also where the electrical engineering thing comes in is well, as an engineer, you learn how to break problems down, right? If you're into data mining, you learn how to break problems down right, into little right. pieces. So that's what I do in my in my part of the world now. As I look at it, and I, what are all the little steps that have to go on along the way? And where is where are the ones within how I do my work, where making a shift in that approach would have it would would change the game in a big way. So that's why I focus. Do you go as deep as installing or, or, or helping somebody, or is it more coaching, right? Is it coaching or is it installing, you know, a business intelligence tool like Microsoft BI or Tableau mm -hmm. or something like that? Yeah, I, it's funny. In the early days I used to, when, uh -huh. when this field started, I could go in and do some of that. But as it's evolved, it's become so much part of the enterprise where mm -hmm. you have to tie it into security and it's the scalability mm -hmm. of these things. Mm -hmm. And literally in the early days of using Tableau, I ran a Tableau server for my company, mm -hmm. which was a pretty big company on a Microsoft, you know, computer uh -huh. under my desk. No. <laughs> and I downloaded the software, you know, and I installed it on this computer and hooked it into the network. And that, but that wasn't sustainable because I didn't really know how to, I wasn't qualified to do that on any yeah. kind of real <laughs> scale because, uh -huh. but once you needed to take into those other factors into account, I said, that's not an area that I'm good. You know, I don't know that that has to be, that's for the world of people who are experts at that. So I said, I can't do that anymore. And I had to focus on a bigger picture about where I could, make a difference in, yeah. in, in, in doing this. So really where I focus more is three areas is one going into a customer who might say, we've been doing this work for a while, mm -hmm. kind of like the story you said in the beginning, doing the work for a while, it's not, it doesn't seem to be helping us. We're not making the kind of change that we want. And we believe in your philosophy, we want you to come in and help us rework how we're presenting our information. So we'll go through that that whole model and just kind of like, you could think of it as traditional kind of consulting, but in this in this specialty. Uh, mm -hmm. I also do I have uh, programs where I go in and train customers mm -hmm. on my framework. So uh, that came about because my customers would say, "Can you teach us how to do what you do?" And I said, "I don't know, maybe." You know, there's a big gap between knowing how to do it and teaching other people how to do it because you have to really figure it out because you yeah. know what you're doing. Right, so right. It, it's taken me a while, but I've over the years, I've developed some materials for that. And now I'm in the process of taking some of those materials and building online courses for that mm -hmm. so that 
I don't have to show up and teach it. I can take out the pieces and people can just go and and they can sign up for the courses and and go through it at their own pace and and learn how they how they want to. So I've been dissecting the business in different ways to try to get people the different elements of what I have mm -hmm. uh, in the way that makes the most sense. Yeah, that's awesome. You know, let, let's let's dive a little bit deeper into that framework of yours, right? You know, because the you you mentioned the framework, and I, I always think it's awesome when somebody has created something of their own that could potentially become a legacy, right? Especially in the IT uh, era, um, and there's so many different aspects where you can kind of create your own and 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 make something unique, make something great that lives on forever, even when we leave this earth. And you know, you created a framework. You know that 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 is pretty interesting to me. You know, called Design Design Act, and you know, could you tell them a little bit about that? You know, and and the use cases for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it goes back to a little bit what I mentioned before about this idea of a product. Thinking about your work as a product, because most of what happens in the world that I live in, in kind of data visualization, is there might be a project. And there might be somebody who's responsible for producing the set of charts and dashboards and so on. Mm -hmm. And when that's done, meaning it's approved and you know it's working and so on, it today you press a button, it gets published to a server and you send out the link and people access it. And then you go, I'm done with that project. You know, more or less, maybe you update it and things, but you're pretty much done. And you go on and do another project. When you think about developing a product, well, that's not what happens, right? When you develop a product, yes, you finish the product, but there's other things that happen afterwards. There's marketing, there's education, there's training, mm -hmm. there's performance measurement, uh, there's actual uh, finding out, did it work the way you want, right? Even something like Amazon, uh, a few mm -hmm. days after they drop the thing off at your door, you get an email, hey, right. <laughs> what happened with it? Are you happy with it? Did it work? You know, you know, it, can you rate it? Things like that. So, so the the framework is really built up into three pieces, which is one is giving people the foundation, as we were talking about before, helping them understand what is visualization, how do you use it, uh, so they understand the language of visualization. So going through that, so they know how to write in, they know how to write visually. It's the same as if you know English. You can use Microsoft Word, or you could use this pen, right, mm -hmm. on a piece of paper. You can. So uh, you have to know the fundamentals, not on a technical basis for a particular application, but say, I want to teach you something that no matter if you're using Tableau, PowerPoint, Excel, or any of these other applications that are out there, you you know enough that you can apply the same principles. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of part one. Part two is going through this uh, model of understanding that I walked through of making sure you have a way to find out what you're really supposed to be doing, what your customer really wants. They're the ones who are buying the product from you, even though they're inside your company. They might actually be outside your company, right? Maybe you're a marketing agency mm -hmm. and you have a customer, right? They're your client and they're paying you to do this work for them. So right. it really is a product in that, in that sense or a service, if you want to think about it that way. So then there's a whole methodology in there that uh, borrows from things like agile uh, to movie making. So think about this idea. I know that might sound a little strange, but movie making ties in with storytelling in a way, right? Mm -hmm. So if you're if if you're Steven Spielberg and I give you my script, mm -hmm. right? You don't start Steven Spielberg doesn't start shooting the movie right mm -hmm. away, right? Zack Snyder doesn't start shooting the movie. What right. do they do? They go through this process of laying out the story, what they think it should be like, and they 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 draw it very nicely. They have real storyboard artists to draw these things out, and they lay them out. And they go, do these things make sense in order, right? And they can move them around or get rid of them, and they say, I don't need that, or that's confusing. So we do that, but on a very quick and rapid scale that, yeah. that ties those that idea in with agile um, methodologies. So I can take what you've told me and get back to you very quickly without yeah. having to get into the data yet, which is key. Because uh, sometimes the data is not even ready, which is a whole nother issue, right? Uh, People say, oh, I can't start my project because the data is not ready yet. 
Ah. This lets them actually go through that. And actually, sometimes you can even give feedback to the data team that says, I just heard this. I'm not even sure we're, we're doing that or we're, we've thought about this aspect of what we need for the data. And then you go through all that. Once that's knocked out, then you can actually go into the build cycle you, in your application. You can write the story. And then you get into that final phase, which I mentioned, which is kind of the what I call activation, which is the marketing, the education, finding yeah. out, did it really work, right? I could build something. I could build it. You might say, this is great. And then I want to come back and say, hey, you know, you've been using, I see that every Tuesday at 8 a.m. you log in yeah. and you're using it. What are you using it for? Mm -hmm. Oh, I did this, this, and this. Well, what decisions did you make from that? Well, mm -hmm. I, I did this. Well, what happened when you did that? Well, I did this. Did it did it work out the way you wanted it to? Actually, no, it didn't. <laughs> hmm, we should look at that, right? Because that's what the whole that's what it was supposed to do. And if I find out that it either if if it didn't, I have to figure out why. Either right. it could be the data was wrong. Could be I it, you were seeing it the wrong way. Maybe you're misinterpreting it. So don't just say it didn't and then go off and say, oh, it doesn't work, right? You know, you still exactly. have to go. <laughs> right. But you can't, but a lot of people just want to do something. I hear this a lot. Uh, well, how's, how, how is it performing? Well, we have 3,000 people view the dashboard. Mm. I say, so? And they say, what do you mean, so? <laughs> That's a lot. I'm like, no, so what? What mm. happened? They're like, I don't know. I'm like, then that's like knowing 3,000 people went to your website, but not knowing what they did right they leave did they buy they, it's the same they thing on the page for a certain time you know did they go to the ad cart feature did they did they go through the pages you know you have to know right. what they did throughout the process right okay so it's it's that it's all the going all the way and the only way you can do that which data people data visualization people data you know munging people don't do is go and talk to mm -hmm. that end user so i say you literally have to go and talk to that customer at the end and find out. You have to have, dig into their brain and see what happened. You can't measure it. You can measure it to know going in. So you have some basis for a conversation. Mm -hmm. You can just catch them in the hall and go, how's it going with that? And they go, oh, okay. Or, you know, it needs to be more <laughs> serious than that. Again, it goes back to that cultural aspect of one, never been done that way. And two, they don't necessarily know how to do it because it's not part of their themselves as a person. It's not necessarily how they, you know, want to be or expected to have to do that kind of thing as part of their job, but they right. have to, to be effective in storytelling and data visualization and working with data. I think these are all fundamental skills that people need to develop over time in, in a company because everybody's going to be working with data in some capacity going forward. You know, it's it's just the future, and so everybody has to have some element of these kinds of skills. It's not just about reading charts or scraping data or all that. You have to have a little bit of all of this to yeah. function. Not easy. Not, it's not. I'm not saying it's an easy thing. I'm just saying I think it's necessary. And that's a great point, right? It's not easy, but it is necessary. But you have to do that work because um, if you want a good uh i guess a good product at the end of the day or a good uh solution or or a good end result right you know you have to do some of the things you really don't want to do right <laughs> you know the hard right. part going back and things like that and you know that's that's a really interesting um interesting uh framework that you have you know how, how long did it take for you to actually develop that and did it take a long time a long time yeah <laughs> it took, it, I, I'll, I, it took a, it took, I, I've always, I've had the idea of it and, and used it for a while, which was kind of on my own and it's broadened over the years and it's been refined over the years because as I've had to explain it to people, I've really had to find ways to, my goal of course was I have to give you everything, right? I have to teach it all to you. Yeah. I have to download all my knowledge and it wasn't practical, right? It was just, it's too much. Right, to go right. through it's over it's overload for somebody who's gone from i just need to make better charts to trying to change their entire way they behave and operate so i've had to slim it down in a way that over over the time to get it to be more effective and more efficient and then you can always get better at it right so you right. have to so that's been the biggest challenge i think is 
scaling it down where you give them just enough where mm -hmm. it starts to make a difference, but not too much where it's like they get stuck. Overwhelming or something. Yeah. 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 Exactly. yeah. No, that's great, man. I appreciate that, Lee, for, for you shedding that, um, for you telling us about how the, the framework works, you know. Um, do you have any insight on, so, so you know how you have the whole data transformation, transformation part, right? You got the ingest, you know, you can do analytics on, you got the cleaning part, you can do analytics on it and all that good stuff. And then at the end, you have to uh, show the customer or show who you're trying to trying to explain the, the, the visualization to, you have to show it, right? You have to show the visualization. Mm -hmm. But there's a, I believe there's a language, right, for each each portion of that, mm -hmm. right? You know, when you go somewhere, you know, I cannot speak the same language I go to another country. Sometimes, you know, you can, but when you, but depending on where it is, but but if you think about it, right, you go somewhere else, you know, it's it's, it's better if you, if you can speak their language, right? You know, it's a maybe you get more respect, you know, maybe you have. Um, uh, uh, maybe you can communicate better. Maybe they understand it better when you're speaking their language. Right? Absolutely. So, uh, when you when I think about that entire data transformation process from ingest all the way to the visualization part, uh, how do you speak the language of data visualization technologies? You know, how do you see that happening? Yeah, uh, this might sound strange, but I don't think that you should. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, here, well, here's why. So, mm -hmm. well, part of what I described helps in the in that that language part, right? Because the more I talk to that end customer, the better I understand them. So that's one part of it. And when they know I understand them, that's good. the The reason I I in this I'm not I'm not sure if I'll answer your question directly. So we'll feel free to probe some more. But one of the things we talk about too in this is when people typically go in. To a presentation let's yeah. say they go into a meeting and they're going to be showing their dashboard what do they do they go and they go okay i'm going to click here and i'm going to choose from this filter yeah. and then yeah. this this scatter plot is going to change and then you're going to see over here and then and they're just they're they're talking about all the bits and bytes of it mm -hmm. and look and instead we train them to kind of tell it not as a story as much but just to do it. So, yeah. so you just talk through it. You don't tell them what you're doing. They'll see it. But you're saying, hey, OK, uh, I know that it, we want to we're going to start looking at the uh, what happened in uh, December of 2021. So you'll go and maybe you'll click something and you'll change it to December 2021. And then I can quickly see that, uh, you know, the, uh, we sold a lot of X, Y, Z product uh, in December, but it looks like it went it went up a lot from November, which is really good. And you talk through it like that. Basically, you overlay the 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 analysis. So so it's sinking in to people as you're telling you're telling them the story, not explaining the dashboard to them, which is a big difference, uh -huh. right? Uh -huh. So you're not yeah. saying click here, click here. So you're also teaching them. So let's say then after the meeting people have to go use it. You've also started to set in a level of training tied into how they're going to use it, not like I'm teaching you where to click. And they don't care. I also teach them, tell people to stay away from the technical terminology like scatter plots and, you know, bar, even not to say a bar chart, you can just move to it and say over here. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you don't have to say line, they can see what it is. You know, yeah. you, know you don't need to confuse them with the lingo and say, I'm going to, you know, if you're using something like Tableau, I'm going to select this quick filter or, or right. they cares? don't care. That, right. Who cares? Yeah. <laughs> yeah but it, it messes, but that's what people do. Cause uh -huh. again, you're so deep into the tool. That's where you live. That's how you think about it. You have mm -hmm. to flip and say, no, I'm going in and I'm, I'm telling them what I learned and showing them what they want. They want to see. They don't care that I, they don't even care it's Tableau. They might know, mm -hmm. but what if next week the company switches to the next product mm -hmm. and it looks exactly the same? You're not going to go in and start the meeting and say, "Oh, well, last week I showed it to you in Tableau, and now we're on, you know, product Y." Right, right. No, that's it's a great relevant. 
if you think about it, I mean, I so I work for Oracle right now, and the way to sell, right? I'm trying to explain to a lot of people is not to talk about the products, right? You know, and I guess what you're saying is you kind of tell the story, right? You know, instead of talking about the specific the speeds and feeds and all these great things, all the stuff that the features, mm -hmm. it's great, you know, but I, I like to explain to them scenarios or, or stories, if you will, that that have happened that actually would bring them back and say, man, you know, I love I love that story so much that can you tell me more? And right? can you tell me more about how mm -hmm. what are you doing that that actually impacts this this story? You know, and the next thing you know, we're selling the product. Right. And uh, so, you know, that that definitely leads me into why do we need storytelling for our data? You know, I mean, you just what you broke down, you know, when you're looking at the visualizations and you're actually looking at Tableau or you're looking at Microsoft BI or Charbo, whatever it is, right? You're looking at these different tools, you know, and you're trying to tell a story. You're not really trying to, you don't need to explain to them, oh, you click here and click it. It, it actually confuses me trying to uh, create all that. So I know when, when mm -hmm. I would to explain it to a customer, I would rather tell a story anyways right about the data because who cares about how i got to all that right they want to know how does it impact them their business you know that's what they want to care about right so is that why do you see storytelling being so important with our data yeah because again it goes back to this idea the idea that the data isn't relevant in in, in all of it right the data itself is there to support it and wow. And right, just in the same way I said that the data visualization is there to support that end goal. And so to me, the storytelling is not, and, and even the idea of storytelling is a little bit, I don't know what I would replace it with. I, I kind of say communication, but that's boring. You know, mm -hmm. it's not as exciting as storytelling. But a lot of times the problem is people think of storytelling as like, oh, there has to be a, you know, a major problem and then there's an arc to the story and then there's a, it res resolves. And it's not really like that, you know, in the real world, right? When it comes to a company, not what you're going in and presenting it like that. You're going in and you're saying, what's going on in the company? You know, what's happening? What can we do? We're trying to market better. We, we didn't sell enough. Why is that happening? And so on. So uh, storytelling in itself is a, is a little, it can be a little intimidating I think it also because people are like, well, I'm not creative. I don't know how to tell a story. I'm not, you know, right. and it can feel like a, almost like a non-starter that you're, you're getting drawn in. And even there's some of the, the, the applications have features that say, oh, you know, we have storytelling in them, but it's really almost just like a way to organize your dashboards and your slot, your charts. Mm -hmm. So if you're a good storyteller, it's great because it's helping you organize your information easily. Mm -hmm. Just putting your stuff into the slots doesn't mean you're telling a good story. Mm -hmm. You know, so a lot of people say, "Oh, I'm using the story feature." It's like, <laughs> yeah, you're using the technical aspect of it, but doesn't mean you're really telling a story, mm -hmm. right? So there's a lot of there's a lot of things that can derail again because of the the way people are are. Um, the, the software is being evolved and, and how people are thinking about it. And, right. and uh, I think it's all good because it's making people think about these issues, but in the same way it can get you into trouble because you're not really, you know, you're not necessarily delivering on what you think you are when you're, when you're going about that. Uh, and it, it takes time. You know, you were talking about Python, right? And you said you struggled with trying to use some of the software in like Tableau and Power BI. It's like, but you didn't know how to use Python right right away. Mm -hmm. Probably took you a while to get good at it. Even if You're you right. knew the the logic of how you wanted to manipulate the data, you had to learn it. Mm -hmm. And all these other applications are the same way. It's just you need time yeah. to to get good at it. Uh, you know, nobody's good at it when they start. Nobody knows. Yeah. It's a no, skill that you evolve. You know, you evolve. That you learn over time. Yeah. 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 No, no, great point. And, you know, when you going back to the storytelling aspect, you know, you you definitely hit it spot on, you know, and and when I think about storytelling is it's it's something that really resonates with humans more. Right. You know, mm -hmm. like that emotional connection 
that you have to a story, right? It yep. makes you want to do whatever it is that the person is probably trying to get you to do. You yeah. know, if you could tell a story that resonates with them and their history or whatever it is growing up, you know, their childhood maybe, or, you know, uh, uh, um, um, taking photos or pictures in different places, you know, it's, it's or if you have kids, right, and you're telling a story about kids and you're and you're and you're telling them the story through the charts and graphs, you know, and, and you're trying to get, you know, whatever angle you're trying to get, more than likely you'll get it with that story, right? Not the numbers and 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 all that stuff that you're trying to put in, or not not talking about, oh, you gotta click here, click there, and stuff like that. You know, but at the end of the day, you'll get the message across through a story yeah. better than anything, right? Yeah, there's two so so it's Good that you're bringing that back up. So there's there's two things I, I want to 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 just highlight. So one, I described that approach about going to people and asking them, you know, why are we even doing this when a project starts? Effectively, what that does is they're giving you the foundation of the story that they want to hear. Mm. Right. Uh, they might not be thinking about, but that's what they're doing. Right. They're saying, hey, what I'm trying to do is. X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. That's what I want to know about. And so if you can come and tell them about, right? So that's part one. So you're kind of doing it, but you're not, you're obviously not going saying, well, what story do you want? They're, they're not going to know how to respond to that. That's right. too, too broad. It's too big. So that's why you break it down in these pieces. The other aspect of that, which comes, you were asking me before about making some of these changes. There's another thing I've started to really push and uh, it's this idea about how people actually put titles on their charts. And this might seem mm -hmm. like uh, semantics, but I'll explain it. So mm -hmm. you might say, let's say uh, I'm going to give you sales data, right? Someone says, give me the sales trends. Mm -hmm. uh, what, would, what title would you probably put on your chart? Sales. Or, or. <laughs> exactly right that's what you do right and, and and a lot of times it might just be the name of the field right because it almost gets carried over automatically or something sales and i show that to you what if instead it says um, how do sales compare to last year or when sales go up do profits go up so the the difference i'm pushing people into is to re reframe the title of your chart and also your headlines on your dashboards because if you think about the title of your dashboard is like the story headline as well it mm -hmm. sets the it sets up what someone expects to see and get out of the rest of the page yeah. so if the title of the page says per sales performance mm -hmm. that could mean thousands of different things versus some specific aspect of sales performance that it's really trying to tell you a story about. So like sales performance with X or sales performance with Y or something. Or Even how how did how did sales perform uh, compared to our main competitor? Or how did you know it could be anything, right? Mm -hmm. And the other aspect of that, number one, to, re, to, to frame it, it also, the difference is in how people respond. If it just says sales performance, it's like, eh, sales performance. Mm -hmm. It doesn't engage, it's not engaging. It doesn't make you think. It doesn't make you curious. It doesn't make you go into any kind of analytic mode. Right. If I right. frame it as a question, your brain flips. And it's like, mm. ooh, a question. I, I need the answer to that question. Ah. What question are we trying to answer now? Uh-huh. And so it, it makes you, it, it draws you into the story. It tunes you in to what you're going to see. And, and then everything that follows has to link up to it, right? So it all has to interconnect. It can't just be a bunch of random charts and things. It all has to link. And that's how you make sure your story holds together as you build it. And then mm. you're putting the right pieces of information on the page and not just information that someone said they want. Right. And so that's where this whole framework comes in is helping people understand how to do that. And it's literally step by step. It's not just like I said to you, we'll just make sure everything on the page ties together. It shows mm -hmm. you 
how to go through the framework in a way that it automatically starts to fall into place. Yeah. So it's not it's not a theoretical idea. It's literally like a recipe, mm -hmm. if you will. If you follow the recipe, you're going to get what you want at the end. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. It, it takes like the that. pressure off of someone like like you saying, "Well, I didn't know what to do. I I was intimidated." I said, "Okay, that's fine. I know you don't know how to do it, so we're going to break it down, and you're going to follow these steps, and eventually, you're going to get good at it, and it's going to be second nature to you." But, but you're going to have something to refer back to so that you, if you get stuck, you know how to keep going and not just give up and feel I'm stuck. I don't know what to do now. And you just go back to the old way of doing it, which didn't work, but it's what you know. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of challenges in teaching people and getting them to change how they do things and how they'll how change their own behavior before they even are able to change other people's behavior. So it's very intricate. And uh it's 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 that's why it's taken a long time to also refine it because you see how people react and you try to change the content and how you teach it so that they can absorb it better and they can feel better about doing it so it's yeah it's almost like the uh you ever heard that book called the nudge theory um i have i, I haven't read it but it's i've heard of it yes it reminds me of a, um the nudge theory it's it's a it's a book that that sort of just nudges you in the right direction of what you're mm. trying to get them to do right you know and i mean something as small as the reason why we have small plates um sometimes at meals is just, you know they're trying to uh get you to think maybe to eat eat smaller you know maybe better diet things like that you know mm. and i eat a lot of food you know or if you're in a a, a, a building or just an office and you have one trash can, right? That's in a certain location instead of at everybody's desk, then it gets you to exercise and walk to mm -hmm. that trash can, right? You know, or if you go to a bar and you have, and you're sitting at the bar and, and you look straight ahead, majority of the time, there's a mirror there, right? That reflects you against you. So you can see yourself, you know, drinking, you know, mm -hmm. and it looks cool, right? And then there's this, the, all of the alcohol that is most pricey is usually in the middle part, right? It's kind of nudging you to say high, high level that you may want to try that the alcohol. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it just makes me think about that when you're thinking about, you know, the, it's all strategy, right? And everything you do is strategy. And and with data visualization, going back to that, when you think about the, the charts, the graphs, you know, that title is something that nobody really thinks about, right? You're like, give me a title, right? You know? even a title of a company, right? You develop this new company. It's a, a title of a company. You're just like, hey, some people say, I don't care about my, my company, you know, name. You know, I just want to just do it. I don't care about the, the name of my chart or graph, but it means more than what what we think, you know, is what you're saying, right? You know, yeah. and it, it really helps you, um, I guess, it, it probably would, would entice somebody to actually look further past just the title if you give the right title to that's yeah that's the whole thing is it's it's easy to scan past sales mm -hmm. or profit you right. might look at it but and it, but it may also not really be the point as well of what you're mm -hmm. trying to get across which is also the the issue right it's it's a it's why it goes back to communication it's what is it that's supposed to be telling you it, it all has to it all has to connect if it doesn't then then the story starts to break down into mm -hmm. just being you know i say that People have to look, you know, it's not data visualization is not the activity of making charts, mm -hmm. which is what people think it is. Exactly. Oh, I got new right. software to make charts. No. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, it's changing your perspective through some of the things that I've described. To me, that's what data visualization is. It's a combination of all of these things, business, understanding the data, um, a little bit of creativity, but you don't need to be that creative. My mom was an art teacher, so maybe I got a little bit of it, but <laughs> you know, I'm not really that great with art, but you can, you, these are things you can get good at mm -hmm. uh, and, and learn the basics of, you know, uh, you don't have to make amazing infographics. You can make a chart look pretty good and it's going to, it's going to work for you as long right. as you follow the right kind of the right rules and things like that. So it's, it's layering all these pieces. And that's, what's interesting to me about data visualization it's actually probably one of the few areas where all of these aspects of working in a company are coming together because it's it's where the data is coming in, right? 
from one mm -hmm. side and the business coming in from another and and the analysis aspect, right? Understand putting it all together and and then presenting it and communicating. It's a lot of different skills that, like you right. said in the beginning, people don't realize what it really is. And that's right. why I think it's so hard. You can't just throw, it requires a lot of work, a lot of effort. It does require people with certain, I think, um, a bent towards it. Mm -hmm. But I think people can get good at it. But I think some people will just be, you know, I'm not going to be a Python programmer. I could probably learn it. I'm not going to be as stylish as you are with it. You know, I could get through it probably. It's the same for everybody, right? You can't expect everybody to be great at everything. And this is just one of those fields that over time, I, I believe people will start to recognize some of this mm -hmm. and it's going to evolve past just the technical aspects of what software should we buy right? and things like that and incorporate some of these ideas that I've been talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Well, th well, thank you, Lee. I appreciate everything you've done. I want to end if, if, if the, if the audience could take away some things, right. From all of this, right. You know, I want to end it with, you know, three common mistakes that you see that are made with data visualization, right? You know, what are your thoughts as the expert? You know, when you see data visualization happen, three common mistakes, you know, that that are made. Uh, I'll give you one real practical one, which mm -hmm. isn't super easy necessarily to handle, but I think if people could do it, it would be great. So one of the things that you see a lot, and this has been around forever, is red, yellow, green, mm. right? Mm -hmm. So people talk about everything in business, red, yellow, green, right? Everybody knows what it means. Red is bad. Yellow is, yeah, we're doing all right. And green means we're, we're doing okay. Right, we're doing right. better, right? The problem is around this thing, uh, it, the term used to be color blindness, but the, re the more proper term these days is color vision deficiency. Mm -hmm. uh, the most common version of this is where people have trouble distinguishing between red and green. And it's mostly prevalent, about 8% of men have this condition where they're not able to see, it looks like a muddy brown to them. Mm -hmm. uh, women, it's it's almost not a problem for women. It's like half percent of the female population. Now there's other versions of it. This is just the most common one. So imagine you're in a meeting mm -hmm. and you're showing someone a chart. Maybe it's a whole table of reds and greens. And you're like, look at this, look at this. And they're like, it all looks the same. Yeah, yeah. It would. So uh, it's so ingrained in society about red, yellow, green that you really need to move to something like red and blue or orange and blue or red and black. In finance, red and black is good because like in the red and in the black actually have meaning. Mm -hmm. So it's a it's a push. So that's one thing people can do. That's a, a big mistake in data visualization. Uh, I'll just tell a short story. So about six, six years ago, uh, I know you, you mentioned the Ravens before, so you might even know about this one. So there was a game, there, were, there was a, the NFL had this thing called the color rush. Mm -hmm. And all these all the teams had these really um, different, they changed the colors up on their uniforms. And there was mm -hmm. a game and the Reds, the, the Jets and the Bills were playing. And one team had a green uniform and one team had a red uniform. Mm -hmm. And people couldn't, who were dealing with this issue, they couldn't see who was playing the game because everybody looked the same. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I'm thinking, how could they make this mistake? This is not a, uh, an, this is a known issue. It's not, and it's common. And there was a whole big thing about it. And it's, it's crazy. So, I mean, it's, it's still in, it's still in society. It's a big thing. So I would say that's number one. Yeah. I'm going to have uh, to look that up. <laughs> because yeah, I just, if you just know. Google NFL color rush jets bills, you'll see, uh -huh. you'll see it. And uh, you'll see the video. It's just really weird because it's just somebody took the the film and put it, process it so that mm -hmm. it would look as if you had this condition and how you would see the game. And it's like, you know, until you can see the helmets, which is still difficult anyway, because, you know, when you're watching the game, you're not zoomed in on the helmets mm -hmm. that close. So, yeah, check it. Check that one out. Uh, second thing I would say is if. Take this idea I talked about taking orders is what I call it, right? Someone says, I need this, and you just go and run off and mm -hmm. you just you get it and you get into this vicious cycle of the back and forth. Mm 
Um, so even just pausing and and you don't have to get into that kind of longer conversation uh, that I was starting to express because of course it takes a while but even just saying hey you know tell me a little bit about what you what you're trying to get out of out of this project you know kind of thing just pausing like that not talking about the data who cares about the data just tell me like you said the why mm -hmm. what, what are you trying to use it for you know what you know, it's kind of like, again, if you think about it as a product and someone says, I want to make this product. So why, what are we going to do with it? Why does mm -hmm. somebody need this thing? Right. Whatever it is, even if it's a down to a pen, why do we need to make this kind of pen? Why do mm -hmm. we need to make this kind of microphone? Right. There's a, there's a reason there's a market behind it. Except you don't think about it that way. Cause it's just your, someone you're working with, you don't look at them as your customer, which you should. Mm -hmm. So I would say, look at them. Maybe I could boil that. Say, look at them as your customer treat them as a customer and think about how you would want to respond to them. That right. might be the, the, uh, the second thing. Uh, and then I think this other uh, thing you could start to change is again, re that can make a big difference without getting into any kind of technical issues is thinking about things as this question when you're just naming, even if you have the, even if you think your charts look terrible, even if you're not sure, but you think you've done a good analysis, even if you just change those titles, mm -hmm. it'll make a difference because you'll you'll present it differently because you're not going to say sales. You're going to say, let's take a look at how sales performed against profit. Mm -hmm. It's going to force you into a different mode and it's going to force them into a different mode of engaging with you. So if you can do that, I think that would be a huge step, which doesn't require... You know, it's not a big training effort. It's just a little thinking. You probably know what to put there. You just don't do it. You know what's, what it means. You're just going back into what the old behavior is of sales. Now, that, that's great. That's great, Lee. And I'm, I'm going to take heed of all that information. And, <laughs> and, and hopefully I could um, come up with some better visualizations. You know, I mean, I, I honestly skip past a lot of the stuff and maybe it's because that's not my niche and, and I don't focus as much, but if I just took a little bit of energy, right, more, a, a better step towards paying attention to things like the title, it could make my visualization so much better, you know? Yeah. And so, you know, thank you for that. And, and audience as always, you know, I like to end with a nice little summary or, or what I call a dope gem or dope nugget at the end. And, uh, um, what I've learned today is that, you know, stories are an effective way to convey a message, you know, to help people engage with it, right? You know, a story creates an emotional response in people. Um, and, and, and Lee has been able to show us how that is very important when it comes down to data. You know, you must go beyond and, and above and beyond those conventional tools that you have, you know, to reach out to the root of your data and begin to use your data to really create an engaging, informative, compelling story when it comes down to it. So, Lee, I appreciate you being on. Is there anything before we get into the fun part? All right. Is there? Is Wait, there this any, wasn't fun. Yeah. <laughs> well, it depends on who it is. <laughs> I think it was fun. You know, I, before we get into the silly part, I guess you know, for for us, you know, um, is there anything that you want to leave the audience with? Uh, yeah, actually, so that last point I was making about the whole idea about questions, because I like to do things that are, you know, I think you can get a sense, like, I'm all about making it practical. So if you go to, I have a, a little ebook that helps people get started on this idea of, like, how do I write questions? Mm -hmm. So it gives them some some ideas about how to start going in that direction. So if you just go to questionyourdata.com mm -hmm. slash dapper. No, you can just get right, right to the right to the ebook and download it. So it get just gives you kind of a primer on how to attack this versus just sitting there thinking, what should I write? All right, all right, all right, cool, cool. Yeah. So is that am I, is it right? Is it right going across the screen? Uh, yeah, you got it. Yep. Slash dapper. All right, yep. great, great. Definitely check that out, everybody. Um, all right, so we are going to get into a game that I like to call overrated, underrated. The audience knows what the game is. I've been doing it for about 20 or so episodes. And I like to show the audience that we are geeks. We love to have fun. We dive deep, deep into technology, but we care about other stuff too, or not, you know, but other stuff outside of technology, we do think about it here and there. We have our opinions about it. Um, so 
we we uh, we we want to we want to definitely see what Lee has to um, say about some of these topics, right? I'm so he, you know, I'll ask you a question. I'll say, hey, look, do you care about this? Or I'll throw out a topic, and you say overrated, underrated, or right where you think it needs to be. Ready to go? I'm I'm up for it. All right, higher education. Up for it. It's uh, it's not overrated. Uh, I've got mm -hmm. two kids in college, uh, and uh, I think it's transforming quite mm -hmm. a bit. You know, I, I teach at NYU. I also writing material for other universities in this area, and so I, I'm kind of in the middle of what's going on. So it's needed, but it's going to be a lot different. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree. It's definitely going to be a lot different. I mean, uh, the in person we talk about in person, right? Teaching and stuff with higher mm -hmm. education. I'm I'm pretty sure. I don't know. There's probably going to be a study later on about how valuable it is to be in person, right? Just like in the workforce, how how valuable it is to to touch base where you're actually communicating with a person face to face versus uh, online and over the over the phone and things like that. And we're going more towards everything being online, you know. So I wonder how that's going to impact things. From a higher education standpoint um yeah. you know so all right next one gaming hmm that's tough uh i'm not a, i'm not a big game I'll, I'll, I'll tell you something funny it's going to get me in trouble depending on who sees this video <laughs> so my uh my my uh my wife's side of the family i mean has this um we have a big thread uh, a text messaging thread go you know it's a family thing but they've everybody's gotten into wordle recently and i have and, and i haven't jumped into it so every day there's like 30 wordle messages coming through yeah. here's my score every day so uh -huh. right now i'm saying overrated yeah <laughs> <laughs> i agree man you know I, it, it's it's i i only think it's overrated because and maybe it's just me being selfish again it's just because of uh i just have so much going on i would love to to tackle it right a little bit from here, uh, from time to time. But my son, right, he's doing it all the time. And, and you know, you see people making money off of it, right? You mm -hmm. see people in, engulfed in it, right? It's different from different generations back then. And and I get jealous sometimes, you know, that's just my, my, my thought process because I'm like, I want to go back to being a kid, having fun, you know, I think mm -hmm. that's fun what you do. But then I'm thinking, oh, I gotta bring, I gotta bring in money, right? I love technology. I love, you know, why not be a a, a producer instead of a consumer sometimes, you know? So, uh, so yeah, I, I go back and forth with you, you know. All right, eggs. Eggs, I'd say kind of right where they should be. Okay. I like I like a good egg. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, you know, I'm from I'm from New I'm not from New Jersey, New York. You know, we're eggs on bagels kind of people up here. So that's yeah, like, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Speaking of New York, uh, pizza. The oh, New, yeah. All right, New York style pizza. Right. I actually so New York style pizza is 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 right where it should be. But the pizza, I guess, I'm, the pizza that I really like is Neapolitan pizza. Ah. Which is still hard. Is it's coming around, but it's. Mm -hmm. I didn't even know it existed until about seven or eight years ago. I'd never yeah. had it. I didn't know it existed. It probably was about a year and a half, maybe two years ago. <laughs> yeah, it's. We had the kids in New York. We took. We did a pizza tour with the kids. Mm -hmm. We went to one a restaurant and they served it, and I'm like, "This is the greatest pizza ever." So yeah, that's. <laughs> I love New York style pizza, but I have mm -hmm. to say, Neapolitan's number one. <laughs> All right. What about uh, the printer? The printer. Oh. I'd say it's been overrated for a long time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I'll give you my I'll give you my quick answer why I say that. So, when I when I started my career at um, Bell Labs, I had I was doing I I did a lot of writing, and we would mm -hmm. print these documents, and they were so long, and I would say this is such a waste, mm -hmm. and and. And I, I, I made this joke with people and I said, I know how to solve the problem and how to get people to go online. Mm -hmm. Get rid of all the printers. Mm -hmm. People are like, what do you mean get rid of the printers? I'm like, just get rid of the printers, take mm -hmm. them out of the building and we'll figure out another way to, to do this work. Mm 
Uh-huh. It existed, you know, online was possible back then. It wasn't maybe the most convenient, but yeah, I, I not good for the world. You know, most people yeah. still print. I still print sometimes, but I think you can do everything online these days and get it on your phone yeah. and take it with you. Signatures, you know, I, when I'm forced to use a printer, it just blows my mind. It actually has me, it, it forces me to sit down for about 20 minutes and complain to somebody about why, <laughs> why this printer. Yeah. Why you can call this... me and commiserate. We can commiserate. Yeah, we'll, we'll go through it together. You know, I hear I, you. Complain to somebody. So, all right. Household pets like dogs, cats, snakes. I don't know. Hamsters. <laughs> we have, we have no pets. We used to have, uh, the only pets we've had in the house are two crayfish that came home from school. <laughs> they came home from school. Did you take care, them, you take care of them? Is take care of them? We did. We did. They grew really big. They lasted a long time, and then one escaped from the cage what? somehow. We don't. Yeah, and we finally found it, but it we couldn't yeah. get it. it <laughs> we, but life support didn't work after we put it back in the water. It never recovered. Yeah, yeah it crawled. It, it crawled what was probably the equivalent of a couple of, of walking a couple miles for a crayfish. What? Somehow. I don't know. We don't know. Still how don't know how it got it. <laughs> it walked down steps. I mean, everything. Yeah. yeah. Oh, crap. <laughs> well, not walk down steps, but it made it down steps and was still. Yeah. So, yeah. Although we did take care of my niece's dog recently, which was fun. So. Oh, yeah. man. All right. I got two more for you. Uh, right. One is snow. I'm in New Jersey. Snow is overrated, but, but right. But it's kind of like the, it's, it's overrated, but it's, I guess also it's kind of right where it needs to be in a way, because I live in New Jersey, not by accident. I know it's coming, so I can't really complain about it. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I hate the snow, man. I hate shoveling. I hate having to yeah. deal, with, deal with it. You know, I work from home now majority of the time. So it's a little bit better for me when it snows. I'm like, I'm not the person that's outside. You know, I just sit inside, look at everybody else, sh- sh- shovel and things like that. Right. The only time I go outside is just to talk to all the other fellas, right? To have a right. conversation with, them, with my neighbors about, you know, just life, right? We just talk about life. And so that's the only reason why I'm out there. But it's not to leave because I'm not, I'm not leaving. <laughs> yeah. So, all right. The last one, right? And hopefully, hopefully I don't get you in trouble with this. Valentine's Day. Because we're coming up a Valentine's <laughs> Ah, I won't same. get in trouble because my wife knows my opinion. <laughs> so I we 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 have a we I guess I would say celebrated in a nominal way, uh-huh. but it's not a holiday. You know, it's yeah. a marketing it's a marketing play. Just like Absolutely. you know all these other, you know, it's brilliant. I mean, I I I, I admire it for its success, mm-hmm. uh, but it's not a holiday. You know, right. uh, per se, <laughs> that way. But yeah, we 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 do our little thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I just figured I'd throw that out there. I was like, I hope I don't get. I hope I don't get. Every day is home. Valentine's Day in my house, man. If, if that's what I'm talking about, Lee. That's how you say it. Right? <laughs> good one, good one. Well, thank you for being on podcast and audience. Thank you for listening to the Data is My Side podcast, the show that makes data your passion. I'm your host again, Dapper Data. You know, where can they reach you at Lee? And is there anything that you are promoting right now, a book or a conference event or something? Yeah, right now, uh, I'd love for people to learn from grabbing that ebook. It's not too long. It's pretty easy. Hopefully that gives people a little bit of a jump start on some of these things. They can always check out my website, just decisionviz.com. And there's some other resources on there that they can uh, can learn from. And uh, that's it. Right now I've got a course out there that they can, you know, that they could take a look at, but love to hear from people and follow me on LinkedIn kind of thing. And I'm always posting up there too. So share right. my ideas. Great. Well, thank you again, Lee. I appreciate it. Now, audience, as you know, you can always follow me on uh, most of the social media platforms, Twitter, LinkedIn, uh, Facebook at Mr. Dapper Data on any one of those platforms. And again, you can definitely check out my book at mrdapperdata.com forward slash dapper book. Um, and I look forward to you all listening to the next one. Thanks again, Lee, for uh, having you. It's been a pleasure. Um, and definitely we need to stay in contact. All right. Love Enjoy. you all. Bye.